Good morning, Shockers, and welcome to Wichita State's weekly briefing. I'm Tracy Fries, Director of Communication for Research and Tech Transfer. These weekly briefings are held in an effort to keep the campus and public better informed about the changes occurring at Wichita State. After the briefing and feature topic, there will be a time for questions. To start the news of the day, we want to remind everyone that registration for the spring 2019 semester started Monday. Those interested in enrolling can visit the registrar's office website at wichita.edu slash registrar to access the course schedule, enrollment instructions, and other useful information. The spring 2019 semester also marks the launch of a new undergraduate degree option. The Bachelor of Applied Science in Workforce Leadership and Applied Learning will prepare students for leadership roles in a range of organizations, including private and public education, human services, middle management for profit and nonprofit agencies, and many others. This degree is designed to op optimize opportunities for students graduating from two-year programs, such as those offered by WSU Tech and community colleges, to pursue a bachelor's degree. We are proud to be only one of a handful of institutions in the country to offer a program like this. This program aligns with our strategic plan and represents our commitment to developing integrative, innovative degrees that meet the challenging needs of students and employees. Last Friday, we were pleased to showcase Wichita State during a campus visit by Senator Jerry Moran and Air Force Undersecretary Matthew Donovan and his team. The visit allowed the university to highlight its aerospace research and development capabilities, its industry partnerships, while giving a firsthand look at how Kansans play a vital role in supporting the Air Force and the aerospace industry. We are very incentivized to find new ways of reducing costs of sustainment and increasing readiness levels of our, of our fleets. And a lot of what we saw today uh, represents a lot of innovation that, that we're very excited about. Uh, I think Dr. Roper will, uh, this won't be his last visit here. Uh, he's very excited. He loved all the toys and the robotic arms and the, and the scanning machines. Uh, but it's very impressive. It's very impressive. And I can, I can see how that will fit into the, our future. You know what that unique piece that exists on that aircraft. What I saw today is a lot of focus on the human factors. And that, that's a delineator from what I've seen at other universities is that the technology and the science is great, but if it can't be applied by the airmen in the field, it's of very little value to us. So I applaud the efforts that I saw here today. Dr. Roper said he was looking for things that either were, were cost effective or increased readiness. The great news about what goes on here, it's not an or, it is an and. We need to do everything we can in our state, here in Wichita and around the state, to make certain that we remain the air cap of the world because we have the talent and education. And one of the things I particularly appreciate about the visit of these Air Force officials uh, is their enthusiasm and their response to what they saw. So while this is a dream and goal of mine to make certain that that happens, what I saw in their reaction to the students and to the faculty and to what's taking place at Wichita State, in many ways, that is here. And what happens at the Innovation Campus, what happens at Wichita State, uh, is among the most important features that will determine the future of our state. And if I can bring it home to Wichita, that will determine whether or not Wichita is the air capital of the world long into the future. People don't know Kansas, and what they do know about Kansas sometimes has an image different than reality. And I don't know how you can visit uh, Wichita State and NIAR without coming away with the idea that whatever the preconceived idea of who, this, who it is that lives here and what this place is like from the 400 miles east to west and the 200 miles from Nebraska to Oklahoma, I don't know how you can not come to Wichita State and come to this campus without reaching a conclusion. This place is different than what I stereotyped Kansas to be. And it is a selling feature for our state. The number one issue that companies are looking for is the quality of education and the workforce training and the motivation of employees to do the job. The most common conversation I have with a business owner is, Jerry, there are plenty of jobs here. We just need more people to fill those jobs, and they need the training and motivation to do so. And this place is a image changer for the state of Kansas. 
We look forward to the outcomes of this visit and to hosting additional defense leaders in the future in an effort to strengthen our partnerships between education, industry, military, and government, and to bring more jobs and prosperity to our city, state, and region. We also want to thank our other special guests, the Kansas National Guard's 1st Battalion, 108th Aviation, for yesterday's visit to campus aboard two UH-60 Black Hawk helicopters. It was a great experience having community leaders, the university, and the community come together to learn about the Kansas National Guard, its people, and the role they play in protecting the security, health, and safety of Kansans. With the, arrival, with the early arrival of winter weather, we want to remind everyone that safety is a top priority for the university. Wichita State provides several ways for you to get timely information regarding weather and safety. We strongly encourage the campus community to sign up for the shock alert system at wichita.edu slash shocker alert to get weather and class alerts by phone and or email. The Wichita State website is also updated with alerts during tornado warnings and other significant weather situations that impact classes and activities. You can call the activity line slash weather and class status at 316-978-6633 option two or you can visit Wichita State's official Facebook and Twitter pages. And now I'd like to introduce our feature speaker, Rodney Miller, Dean of the College of Fine Arts, to talk about infrastructure needs within his college and how the student referendum on academic facilities will improve the learning opportunities of our fine arts students. Good morning. Black Hawk helicopters are a little bit of a hard act to follow, but I'll try. <clears throat> um, I am Rodney Miller, and it has been my privilege for the last 15 years to be the Dean of the College of Fine Arts here at Wichita State. Um, we have um, possession of, if you will, two of the most iconic buildings on this campus. One is Wilner Hall, which was built in 1938 to be the original uh, student center and house all of the student services uh, for what was in University of Wichita. It was built as a um, WPO project during the Great Depression. Henrian Hall is even older, uh, completed in 1921. Actually, it's three buildings in one, and the first was built in 1921. Um, Wilner has undergone a couple of major renovations, <clears throat> or a couple of renovations anyway. Uh, one was in 1962 where they put in an orchestra pit in the auditorium, but unfortunately they also took out about half of the uh, balcony, which has completely uh, compromised the integrity of the acoustics in the facility and makes the performances that we do there quite, quite difficult. Uh, so it is our hope that this renovation, will we will be able to do a few ordinary things like change out the rigging uh, behind the stage and so forth, but also uh, deal with some orchestra pit and balcony issues that will enhance the acoustics. Henry and Hall, on the other hand, has never had a major renovation. Um, it is also a building that is, th it's three separate buildings that have been cobbled together. Uh, the men's gym in 1921, and I think in 1932, the women's gym was built uh, perpendicular to it, and those connected to the west side um, brick and mortar uh, stands for the old football stadium. The, the, the important thing for everyone to understand is that neither one of these buildings were constructed 
to be used in the manner in which they are being used now. And Henrian is an, uh, the most dramatic example of that. Um, it used to be the sports complex for this university, but now it is where our 3D arts, for the most part, are being uh, taught and where our studios for our uh, Master of Fine Arts students are being held. As such, things like ceramics and sculpture, they have uh, a lot of dust, a lot of uh, dirt, a lot of ventilation issues. And one of the things that we're hoping uh, to do, actually one of three things that we're hoping to do, one is to bring up ventilation uh, to the point where it is truly safe and healthy for our students and our faculty and our staff to be there. The second is um, that we're simply not ADA compliant. And the third is we have a lot of housekeeping issues like plumbing that is almost 100 years old and some of the electrical that's almost that old as well. So it would be uh, both of these initiatives uh, all together um, we have about uh, three and a half million dollars uh, on this referendum. And we are hopeful that this will be a major step forward uh, in making both of these facilities um, teachable, comfortable, and a, a, a good learning environment for our students. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Thank you very much. Thank you, Dean Miller. At this time, I'll take questions um, from any of the topics that we talked about today or any general topics. Okay. If there are no questions, uh, we want to thank you for coming to today's briefing. If you're on campus next week, we want to remind you that classes will only be held on Monday and Tuesday. University offices will be open Monday through Wednesday, and there will be no briefing next week. In closing, we want to remind you of WSU's vision and mission, the vision to be internationally recognized as the model for applied learning and research, and our mission to be an essential educational, cultural, and economic driver for Kansas and the greater public good. We hope you have a happy and safe Thanksgiving, and we'll see you next week at the briefing on Thursday, November 29th.